Hey guys, it's Britt. Today I wanted to jump on and talk for a few minutes about something that happened a couple days ago. I had quite a few thoughts, so if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so there is a creator on this platform. She goes by the name of True Ball of Wax. She covers a lot of the Katie Joy stuff, and she is really sweet. I've talked to her a couple times sort of offline, and while I don't consume a lot of the Katie Joy content at, like I used to for reasons that are pretty simple, it just became very oversaturated and it was a lot to process. So I don't watch it as often, but she is super sweet and has always been very nice to me. She had a run-in with a, another person on YouTube, I'm not even gonna say creator, she had a run-in with someone else on YouTube and it sort of put this into perspective for me on how some people struggle with keeping the same energy when similar circumstances happen. And while I completely agree that things a lot of times should be a case-by-case -case scenario, it is interesting when something very similar happens sometimes it's ignored and then sometimes it's like the whole world is ending because of it and some of you might remember i had some issues with bx beast boy on youtube a couple of months ago i made a response video he made several videos about me and then that was it well i haven't been keeping up with what he's been up to but when this debate happened between him and True Ball of Wax, it was brought to my attention and people sort of had the same sentiment. Anyone that sent it to me just said, hey, like, wow, you know, you were right kind of thing. And it really just reminded me of how there's no reason why we should be holding some people on YouTube to a certain set of standards and then others to another set of standards. When he created issues with me, there were a lot of people who just believed what he said and ran with it. I made it very clear that I didn't want anyone to pick sides. I wanted people to be able to subscribe to both of us still but I also wanted people to look at the facts and make the decision that was best for them. And that is something that I've always come to my channel with, look at all the sides, make the decision that's best for you in your life. Some people said, I'm leaving, whatever, so that's fine. And a lot of you said otherwise. And some of you also said, I'm gonna subscribe to both of you. And that was all fine with me. But the amount of outrage that I have seen from what he did to True Ball of Wax versus what he did to me is astounding. And I don't understand why there is such a divide. I am not sure if it has something to do with age. I don't know. And I only bring age to the table because True Ball of Wax is older than me. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Um, maybe it's a perception of she's a little more naive. I don't understand what it is, but I'm making this video to open up a dialogue and hopefully you guys can, I don't know, maybe help me try to figure it out. At the end of the day, I am not, I am not personally invested anymore in people who have an opinion about me. What I went through in December was a huge, you know, learning moment for me to be able to say, there will be people that literally lie about you and exaggerate the truth and clip things and twist things and build narratives against you and that is just part of being on YouTube. It is what it is. I'm not saying that it's fair. I'm not saying that it's okay. I'm not saying that it's acceptable. But it is what it is. You're on YouTube. People are going to have an opinion and sometimes the opinion is not even going to be based off of facts. It's fucked up, but it's true. I did get some questions of people asking me for some reason, why is he doing this? What's the deal? Like what's going on? 
and I don't know for sure, but my speculation is that his channel is dying. It is literally crumbling. You can look at the views versus the subscribers that are leaving. You know, it's still an inflated number of subscribers based on the views and the engagement that the videos get. So I don't know if being the villain is the new way to get attention and views, but at this point, he has literally come for everyone on YouTube just about. And I think one of the biggest things that bothers me is the bullying aspect of it. If you guys don't know, I'm sure some of you do, I've mentioned it in a couple of videos in passing. I did not have a good time in high school. I was not physically bullied, but I was verbally mistreated and emotionally mistreated by my peers. So anytime I see, you know, bullying online or in my real life, it really hits a different place in my soul than it might for some other people because I've had my experience with people being mean to me for no fucking reason at all and it's not fair but it's life. I'm glad that I'm not in high school anymore. <laughs> it's funny because after high school I used to literally have nightmares about going back to high school. Like in my dream it would be like tomorrow's the first day of school all over again and I remember I would wake up and be like oh, thank god I just have to go to work today so the whole bullying thing and I realize that people might say oh well you know you see it as bullying I don't and that's fine but I do believe that it is bullying that is being it's trying to be concealed like it's comedy. It's just jokes. It's funny. I'm a comedian. First of all, BX is not a fucking comedian. He's not funny. Nothing that he does is funny. And there's nothing comical about his content or the way that it's delivered. And I think that that is a shield to hide behind to say, well, if you're offended, then you just can't take jokes. And while I realize that a lot of people on the internet are very sensitive, most of them can see what is actual, what is actually bad and what's actually funny, and nothing that he does is funny. And I realize what's going to happen by me putting this video out. He will come for me again, and he will make more videos about me and twist narratives or chop up part of my video to make it seem like I said something that I didn't. The reason that True Ball of Wax was on his channel was actually to try to help him because she was still a subscriber of his and her words were twisted. He was aggressive with her and yes, I'm using the word aggressive because he was consistently interrupting her, shutting her down, laughing at her. Uh, making her seem like she was not as intelligent as she is and it's disgusting behavior if I'm being really honest so this is a pattern of behavior and I'm not making this video to say oh well if I wanted to be petty I would have just said I told you so but I want to add more to the conversation than just I told you so um, this is a pattern and it is so funny that the person who wants to use the word sad fish so much does not remember that most of his audience came from him sad fishing from being mistreated by Katie Joy. That is where a lot of his audience came from. He was mistreated by her, people subscribed to his channel, continued to watch his content, and then you want to turn around and say that everyone else is sad fishing when most of your audience came from you being sad and showing emotions off of being mistreated by Katie. There was also something said that, you know, I appreciate my subscribers and I don't have memberships and I don't have Patreon or anything like that but I appreciate every single one of my subscribers. I don't need to collect extra money from anyone to appreciate them more. I just appreciate that y'all interact with my videos and watch 
whatever it is that I'm rambling about that day. He said something about, oh, well, it's just a measly dollar. You want your dollar back? Fine. Like he's encouraging people to unsubscribe and all of this kind of stuff. First of all, his membership tiers are not just a dollar. They are, in fact, more than that. And I think the lowest one is $4.99. So how dare you act like people don't matter and their money doesn't matter because that money that they're giving to you could be going to groceries or their electric bill or their water bill or their car payment or whatever and they are choosing to give it to you. So any creator who has that kind of attitude is, in my opinion, not worth my social media currency and damn sure not worth my true currency, which is paying a fee to them. It really sucks that we have people like that in the commentary community that can just twist and manipulate things so much to make it seem like everyone's out to get them and he even calls he even calls his patreon the anti anti cancel bx fund or something like that no one's trying to cancel you i have said things about cancel culture many times on my channel before cancel culture is fake it doesn't exist there is no such thing as cancel culture or else shane dawson and jeffree star would no longer be on this platform and they would no longer be thriving financially so cancel culture is just a tagline in my mind i do believe that there is a holding people accountable culture and i fully support it and i fully stand behind it because if you are giving people either your actual money or your view time, your watch minutes, you have every right to hold that person accountable if they're being a shithead. So the whole cancel culture and everyone's out to get me is fabricated. It's bullshit. Nobody's out to get anyone. Maybe if you would sit down and stop trolling everyone and stop manipulating narratives and acting like a professional them, then that wouldn't even be something that you need to worry about people holding you accountable. So I do think that this individual is someone who's doing a nose dive and I realize, don't worry guys, I know he's going to come out with videos on me and call me whatever. Um, you know, I think the thing that was the most fucked up that he did to me was he tried to spin this narrative that I was a privileged white girl who was out to try to say that it was a big scary black guy. And that is the lowest of fucking low in my opinion. This has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with anything along those lines. It has everything to do with him being a bad person mistreating people, being a bully, and people coming and either giving their opinions or sharing their experience with him. It has nothing to do with race, and I think it's just it's just the lowest of low to try to to try to twist it and make it into that. It's really fucked up. So anyway, I did want to share this, but I also wanted to sort of you know, bring this to you guys and to say, keep the same energy for these creators. If one creator is being a bully and doing this kind of behavior, then don't turn a blind eye to it until five other people come out and say, this guy's a bully or this girl's a bully. Don't, don't wait. Make your decision based on the facts that are at hand. And if the receipts aren't adding up, and if the storyline isn't making sense, then you'll know exactly, you know, what decision works best for you, whether that's supporting both or supporting only one. But I do think that problematic creators do not need to be lifted up. They need to be held accountable, and if holding them accountable means that the views are down and the subs are down, it is what it is. So anyway, those are my thoughts on this. If you like the video, please leave a like and a comment, and if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon.